בעזרת השם. few weeks ago I, uh, I gave a class in Crown Heights and I explained some very important thing about Hashem, <clears throat> about Hashem's supervision on His world and it was a very deep explanation and yesterday night Hashem Yitbarach revealed to me something even deeper about that issue, about that concept, and I uh, wanted to share it with you. So, to make a long story short, I'll remind you a little bit of that class, and I said in that class that every person in his life, he received senses from Hashem, that's the way we've been created, and we can sense certain things in our life. You can see what that is around you, you can smell certain things, and you can feel, you can hear certain voices, and everyone with his abilities, and everyone sees his, his, uh, his area. But Hashem Barach, he's different than us, because he's not limited in the physical body. So he can see and sense and feel everything that goes on. So if you lost your car keys and you can't see them because they're behind the book or a bag or a chair or the sofa, Hashem knows exactly where they are because Hashem is also behind that sofa. Hashem is with the keys. Hashem, Hashem is in every corner, in every angle, in every position, and He's over there from the outside looking on the things, and also from inside the sofa, from inside that rabbit, Hashem Yidvarach is in it. Hashem is the life spirit of all creation. So He is everywhere, inside and outside. He's surrounding the creation, and He's the inside, the spiritual spirit, the life spirit of, of, of every creation and creation. So, now over there in that class, I explained that, let's say, for an example, some nice genius animators made the movie Smurfs, for an example. And now that movie is rolling somewhere, okay? In one TV, in one computer, someone is watching the Smurfs. So that person sits and watch the Smurfs, those kids sitting and watching that movie for one hour, one hour and a half, and that's it, it's finished for them. But Hashem is also above time. So for Hashem it Barach, that movie of the Smurfs is playing forever. And not only in that computer, in all the computers, and in all the televisions, and every moment that took place in this creation for Hashem Barach is an eternal above time thing that happens. So from that you can like understand a little bit about Hashem. So that's great, that's Hashem. So when you call Hashem Barach to your place, Hashem can help you because He was there and He knows and He understands and He recognizes things beyond your reach. Amazing, that's Hashem. Now there is something that is even greater than that. What? It's the mercy of Hashem. That Hashem in Barach, not only that He knows it all, and He feels it all, and He understands it all, and He knows the inside of everything, also that He can give you the power and the ability to enjoy from it. So now, let's say that you have your own memory, or your computer got his own memory, and it can contain certain amount of information. That is limited, but Hashem Barach, memory card, is endless. Hashem he remembers all the information and all the sounds and all the smells and ev that, ev that ever took place in every place in, in, in the universe, right? And Hashem Barach, He connects the righteous people to that archive, to that memory. So when a person is really committing himself to Hashem, he can find that hidden information that is in the archives of Hashem. 
It's called Ginzaya de Malka, the treasures of the king. And who will be the one that will receive it? Only a person that Hashem is checking him and finding him qualified and loyal enough to use that information to keep God's will. And that's what that happens when you meet righteous people and suddenly those righteous people, they know things about you and they can answer you things and like where they got that divine spirit from? From those archives of Hashem, from Ginzaya de Malka, from the treasures of Hashem. Those righteous people and not everyone are righteous and not everyone that claim to have that power really hold that power and not Everyone that know things about you knows them because that is connected to that divine source of wisdom. Some of them are just liars, some of them just know to read your face, some of them just know how to bring you to that position, some of them just so smart that they can figure out that you're going through certain general things like every other person and they can let you feel that they know it about you and actually they don't know anything about you, they're just amazing liars. So there are many, many situations, many, many options of people that will pretend to be as righteous and they really are not, they're really not holding in that level. But. To those real holy ones, to those real amazing people that are connected to that archive, to that amazing source of wisdom and intelligence of Hashem Barach, whatever Hashem Barach saw and realized is open for them, is revealed to them, those holy people can provide the answer and the solution to every problem that you have in life. They can answer to you on every question that you have, they can solve every doubt. And the question is how a person can achieve that level. The only way for a person to achieve that level that Hashem will choose you to tell you secrets on someone else is only when Hashem Ibrahim knows completely, 100% that you will never going to use that information to destroy someone else's life, to ruin someone else or to take advantage of that person. So that's why, first of all, the person is being tested so many times on his loyalty. All of the time Hashem is checking the person, are you a liar or a person of truth or a man of truth? Are you an honest person or are you just faking? Are you really truthful? Are you standing behind your word? Are you going to be loyal? Are you really going to try? And every time we're facing those challenges, all of the time, and a person loses his mind, he gives up, he says, how many tests I can go through? Those tests will continue as long as you can keep on failing in those tests. But when you're going to stop failing in those tests and you're going to stand in those tests and you're going to pass those tests, Hashem will test you, but always in a higher level. It won't be the same. It will change, you're going to develop, you're going to grow. It won't repeat itself. When it's repeating itself, it's only because that you are stuck in the same place. You're claiming to hold yourself in a certain level. You imagine to yourself maybe that you're holding in a certain level. The truth is that you're just lying to yourself and to your company, to whatever who is, that is around you, and you're not truthful. You're not really honest. For an example, it's written that Hashem is rebuking the one that He loves, right? But are we rebuking also the ones that we love? Hashem, when He rebukes you, He wants to guide you and to open your eyes to find what you need to fix. But ask yourself, when I'm rebuking someone else, why is my purpose in doing that? Am I really so thoughtful and caring and, 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 and kind and I, I'm really willing just to help him to see his lack, is that the real purpose of why I'm rebuking him? So if the answer is no, and probably the answer is no, so on you it's written that you're not allowed to rebuke. Because you are allowed to rebuke only when you're not pressing that person, pushing that person down. Only when you're not adding another weight on his shoulders that he will fail. So to a person like that, that cannot judge favorably, that is not rebuking from his good heart, 
just he's taking out his frustration and his anger and his lack of, of, of satisfaction from life on that person, he's not allowed to rebuke. So that is showing to us from one angle how far we are from Hashem. How still we're not in that level that Hashem will give us the wisdom to use. So the purpose of that explanation is only to show us that for every one of us there is an opportunity to climb and to develop and to grow. We must understand that all of what that we're going through is for a purpose. There is a meaning to it. Hashem wants us to pass that test. And in the moment that we're going to stand and just be truthful, just be honest, we're going to achieve so much. We're going to grow so much. We can achieve things that no eye ever saw before. Like that it's written, the Prophet is saying, Ein lo rata elokim zulatecha. You will find the ability, the access to use the eyes of Hashem. Like the, the verse is saying, Hashem la tzaddikim, that Hashem gives His eyes to the righteous ones. So, for an example, if Hashem is checking you and found you loyal, find you honest, now He can give you an access to what that we called before that archive of Hashem. Ginzaya de Malka, the treasures of the king. Like that we said, the eyes of Hashem, Asher Hema Meshotetot Bechol Haaretz, they're going and searching and looking and seeing every corner. If now Hashem found your heart qualified, pure, honest, and now a person is coming to you and asking you something, if you will just gonna focus, you will know the right answer for him. But only if Hashem chose you. And then you can tell every answer to every question. You can know the answers and to solve all the problems. But not everyone is holding in that level. You cannot force that level to come to you. Hashem needs to put you in those tests and you need to stand in those tests. And those tests are the most humiliating tests in the world because the test is to admit that you're failing. That is the main test. The main test is to be humble. To pass the test for that, you need to be humble. A humble person is only a person that is able to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. I'm ready to fix myself. I'm ready to accept the rebuke, the insultings, the shames that are coming to rebuke me from the loving kindness of Hashem, that Hashem rebukes the one that He loves. And when you accept that rebuke with love, when you're a strong person enough to deal with the results of your life, with your failures, with your lackings, with your weaknesses, then you're shown to Hashem Barach that you're a person of truth. Eved Ne'eman, you're a loyal slave. And Rabbi Nachman of Breslev is explaining in Nikutei Moran about that access to the Ginzaya de Malka, to the treasures of the king, to have the ability to see in the, in, your, in the eyes of your mind, to see all of what the Tashem Barach he sees. A person now asks you, where are my car keys? And he doesn't know where his car keys. If you got to that level, you can tell him, look at the second drawer from the left. And he will open it and gonna find the keys. You can ask him, what, it's Divine Spirit? No! For one moment, Hashem Barach just shown you the picture of that place, that spot, that the car keys are over there. And you got the answer. How you got that answer? Because Hashem Barach tested you and found you loyal enough, qualified, pure enough to receive that merit, to have that access to the eyes of Hashem, that they are walking and watching and seeing everything around the world. Hashem connected you to that archive that contains all the info or information of the wide world, of the secrets of creation, what the Hashem Barach sees and experience and, see and, 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 and realize and understand. Now, how you will achieve that level? Only when your will will be one with the will of Hashem. Only when you canceled all of your selfishness, that's how you call it, all of your selfish will, all your, your desire to be something, to own something, to hold something, to have a, some kind of, of security, of confidence, and you threw it all away from you 
and you nullified yourself to the will of Hashem, committed yourself completely to the will of Hashem, then Hashem will give you the access to that knowledge. And on that Rabbi Nachman of Westlev is explaining on that Ginzaya the Malka, the way to connect yourself to those treasures of the king, that the way to achieve it, it's for a person that is serving Hashem in Barach in a way that is even higher than the level of Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu, he was a loyal slave to Hashem. So even though that he was loyal, he was still in the level of a slave to Hashem. But there is another aspect, and that aspect is a child. And it's a child, it's a prince, that is the son of the king, and he loves his father. And he loves his father so much that when he sees that the king needs something, he is ready to go and to do that thing that is even that, that that thing that he finds that he needs to do might be even not worthy for the slave to go and do. Even the slave will not going to want to do that. But that child of the king, he wants the king to be happy and satisfied that he is ready even to go to lower places than the places that the slaves will go. And he's going happily. He's going with a smile on his face. So then the king... He sees that his child is taking him low, to, taking himself to a lower level even than the levels of the slaves. So the king will take his child to a place that you wouldn't even take your children to. The king is lifting that child, that worthy child, that loving child, to being exposed, to see, to visualize, to realize, to understand, to experience even things that he, the king, is not supposed to tell his children. So that child achieved the level to become a partner with the king himself, to become in the aspect of a brother to the king himself. Like the Deor HaChaim HaKadosh is saying on a person, on the parasha, on the parasha that is saying that if a person found the bull, the, the animal of his brother, ki tir'eh shor achicha, so the Or Chaim HaKadosh is explaining that the bull, that, that animal, those are the holy souls of Israel that went off the derech, that fell into the place of lusts and desires, and they're acting like animals. They are holy animals, they are holy souls, it's a kosher animal, that animal that described over there in the verse, but it's still in the level of a bema, of an animal. So if you see the animal of your brother, who is your brother? Dakut Shabarichu, it's Hashem. So the Or HaChaim HaKadosh is comparing you, that person that goes and find those animals and bringing them back to the honor as a brother of that honor, of that farmer. Who is that farmer? Who owns those animals? The Creator. So you made yourself, because that you followed your inner will to go and protect his children, to go and to bring the herd back to the, to the house, to the safe place, to the honor, because you honored him, because you love him, because you care about his children, about his animals even. You brought yourself to be called his brother, the Creator's brother. And now between brothers, everything is equal. You and him are partners. It's equal. You're brothers. You're not higher than him. You're not better than him. You're equal. You're in the same level. Again, who? You and the Creator of the world? Yes. When? When you took His business to be your business, when you took His will to be your will, when what that is important to Him is important to you, it made you equal. And Hashem Barach made you equal. Hashem Barach gave you that access to that ancient knowledge that it belongs only to Him. But He will give you those eyes and He will give you the ability to become beyond nature, above nature. That the Baal Shem Tov we hear that he can close his eyes and let the horses ride the holy chariot by itself and they're running and suddenly he was in Russia and after two hours he's in Poland and then you can see him over there in Germany and what's going on? 
no jet lag and nothing, everything is smooth and easy. Rabbi Hashem Tov, how you do those things? And Rabbi Yaakov and, the, 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 and, and, and all of the, the Buchatzera family are sitting on their nice carpets and flying above the water. What's going on? How you do those miracles? And not to forget the simple miracles that everyone believe in, so to speak. Yeah, Hashem is opening the sea for Moshe. Hashem is bringing out water from a, a rock, from a boulder. There is a, 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 um, a well that is walking with the camp in the, in the desert, walking with them and, 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 and making everyone satisfied. Everyone can drink cold water, filter everything. How is it happening? Because Hashem is beyond nature and He can make you to be above nature as well. And that is exactly what that will happen in the redemption day. In the day of redemption, in the days of Geula, we will become above nature. The Midrash is saying that the righteous ones that were holding themselves with faith will be able to fly. They will have the ability to fly, means to control nature, to be above nature. Like that today you believe that Hashem can change nature if He wants, and your only problem is that you don't understand that you have the same access to the same place, because you and Him are brothers. It just depends on the purity of your intentions. But when you're going to aim your heart completely to His divine will, you will see it. You will recognize it. Your eyes will not be blocked anymore. You will have the access to those ancient archives, to the wisdom of Hashem, to the eyes of Hashem, to the power of Hashem. He will give you the key for the rain, and He will give you the key to revive the dead, and He will give you the key to have children, and to have everything that you want and you need. Why? Because He found you qualified. He found you loyal. He found you righteous enough that your intentions are only to do the good and you're ready even to give up on yourself and you're ready to sacrifice yourself and to do whatever the king will command you. You will stay happy. You're not going to go to sadness and to arrogance, not satisfied, I'm not happy. How can it be? All of those tests, all of those tests are just showing you over and over that you're not worthy. But it's not that you are not worthy. You're choosing your, your, your selfish will instead of choosing to throw away your wisdom and just to follow Hashem's wisdom. Just to do what that Hashem commands you to do. Just always to stay happy, stay positive. My wife looks at me yesterday and she's saying, I can't believe it. You are never giving up. You're always holding on. When you gonna back off, it cannot be that the person never gives up. I told her, I'm sorry. I don't know how to give up. On the ones that you love, how can you give up? On things that are important to you, how you can give up? When you're selfish, you're not giving up on yourself, on your selfishness. But when you care about someone else, you're never going to give up on him. It's your child, it's your wife, it's your best friend, it's your partner, it's someone you love. The Lubavitcher Rebbe, his helpers asked him when he was almost 70 or something like that, why when you're talking to people, you're standing on your feet? Why you're not sitting? Sit! Everything is great! People will come, you will be able to talk to them, we can put you on a small stage, you'll be in the same height with them. What's the problem? He said, listen. When you're counting diamonds, you're not getting tired. He's not tired because for him every soul that comes is a diamond. And that's what gave him the wisdom and the power to give them the answers and the miracles and the wonders that they needed. Only because he sees them as diamonds. Only because that he's judging everyone favorably. Only because he wants to see their success. Only because that he cares about them. That's why he received those holy eyes from Hashem. And not every imagination that crossed your mind is a message from that ancient archive. Only when you're finding yourself that you're standing in the tests of Hashem and you're not falling to sadness because of those tests and you're accepting the rebukes with love and you always love the one that rebukes you. 
When she rebukes you, when he rebukes you, when they're insulting you, when they're hurting you, when they're taking from you, your love doesn't move from its place, then you're worthy. Then you can know that the power of imagination that you visualize, that you see in the back of your mind, those are the messages that you're receiving from that ancient archive, Ginzaya de Malka, the treasures of Hashem. But before, as long as you, when you check yourself, you know exactly who you are and where you're holding, that when you're being insulted, so you're hurt and you're ashamed and you feel bad and you're angry and you're upset. So the information that you're receiving from the back of your mind is usually waste and imaginations that are washing your eyes. And it's not the truth. So you're not allowed to follow that voice. What that you should do is to keep on working on your midot attributes and to try to be a better person. And how to choose the path? It's very easy. People are saying, okay, so what should I do? But how am I going to know what Hashem's will is? Hashem wants only the good. So ask yourself with honesty, is it good or it's not good? Everyone will be happy or not? What is the right thing to do, yes or no? The answer will be always very simple under your nose. Just you really need to seek for the truth. For an example, a person says, I want to learn Torah. You cannot say, don't go and learn Torah. Of course, go, learn Torah. But you know, there are many reasons that the person can have that will push him to go and learn Torah. The highest one of them all, he wants only to do God's will. Amazing, go learn Torah. He wants to learn the halakha because he wants never to fail in no, in no halakha, in no situation. Great, go learn Torah. He is commanded and he's willing to say, wonderful, go learn Torah. He's got free time and he really desires to learn more wisdom. Great, go learn Torah, no problem. But if the reason that you want to leave the house and go learn Torah is because that you can't bear your wife and children anymore, and for you two hours out of the house is an amazing, amazing outlet, so please don't go and learn Torah because it's not going to do good for you. It's not going to help you. It's not going to build you. That Torah will turn against you. If the person purified himself and now Zaha, he achieved that level, so the Torah becomes a potion for him. It will give him life. But if the person lo Zaha, so the Torah will become a lethal poison for him. Naset lo samavet. The same pure water for one person will become potion, for the second person it will be lethal poison. He will come back to his house and he will see that his wife, she's not covering her heads and her hands and her skirt is too short and she's walking without sh uh, uh, socks in the house and she's not modest and the kids, they will see her and they will learn. Okay, you lost your mind, buddy. It's not for you. You're exaggerating. Too much light for your vessels, you start shaking, you're not stable, you lost your mind. Relax. The Torah has been given to us to live, to live according and based on the laws of God, always to be friendly. Torah that has been given to us in pleasant, benoam, to give us life, to give us good midot, like that He is merciful, that we will be merciful, like that He is kind, that we will be kind. Like that we want Him to have patience for us, so that we should have patience for other people. That we will care, that we will have a heart, that we will work and fight for the peace. That we will make peace in every situation. Talmidei Chachamim arbim shalom ba'olam. The verse is saying that Talmidei Chachamim, the ones that are learning Torah, they supposed to bring peace to the world. I saw people, that so-called Talmidei Chachamim, that except of war, they don't have anything else in life. And they will battle, and they will fight, and they will revenge, and they will attack, and they will destroy everyone that will stand in their path. And they're calling themselves the real Talmidei Chachamim. And we are talking about people with issues from their childhood that haven't got over the the, the problems that they experienced when they were 4, 5, 7, 9, 12, 15. And because of their anger and their frustration, they will go and attack and destroy and run over others. And it can be fathers and mothers of families and children and rabbis in school, it can be that will destroy a whole generation. 
And we're not allowed to give our children to those people. We're not allowed to give our wives to those people. We're not allowed to give ourselves to those people. We must protect and defend the weak from those people. Even that they're defining themselves as Talmidei Chachamim, as rabbis, as I don't know who and what. The fact that the power of imagination, it took over their healthy mind, doesn't mean that we need to go and let them destroy our own lives. We need to work with our own logic and to calculate our moves and to think if that thing is right for me or wrong, if it's healthy for my family or not. But the rabbi said, Arav Amar, the rabbi said, Arav Amar. You know what's Harav Amar? Harav Amar, it's in Hebrew you say Harav Amar, the rabbi said. But also if you say Harav Amar, it means the bad and bitter. Hara Vamar. It's bad and bitter. You can also have bad and bitter when the rabbi told you to do something. Yes, you need to listen to him. But the question is, who is he? What's his level? What's his intentions? Is he really pure? You need to answer. But who am I to answer? What do I know about him? Lecha amar libi bakshu panay tamid. Your heart is telling you to look for Hashem. You need to look for Hashem in Barach. You need to check with your own tools, with your own vessels, with the tools that God gave you, with the inner wisdom software that God put inside of you. You must check. You must ask. You must think. You must clarify for yourself if it's good or if it's bad, if it sounds about right or if it sounds bad, if it fits to your family, if you see people around you are growing and getting stronger, having more hope, more happiness in the house, or that it's destroying you, if you see that it's damaging you. So those are those bitter water that you're not allowed to drink because they can become a little poison for you and for your beloved ones. You don't want to bring those water to your house, even if it's wrapped in the most amazing wrapping and for you it looks amazing and you desire that. But you need to check. If after bringing it to the house you see that everyone are dizzy and everyone are losing their stability and their happiness, it's not the right path. Even if everyone are saying, but Arav Amar, but Arav Amar, listen, maybe it's the bad and bitter. Maybe it's not that pure water that you need to bring into your house. You have the responsibility on your own house. And no one will give answers in Judgment Day except of you. And not only in Judgment Day, also now and also tomorrow. No one will have to answer except of you on the question that Hashem asked you. And if your wife she's asking, and if your friend and your children are asking, and if you yourself asking yourself, who am I and what am I doing and what's the purpose of all of those questions need to be answered. How can they be answered? It depends in your inner will, in your inner intention. If you're looking for pride, for honor, for success, for money, for I don't know what, you will never find the right answer. Only when you desire the truth and you want to follow Hashem with all of your heart, no matter how much it's going to cost you, no matter how much you're going to have to sacrifice, no matter how much you're going to have to give. Only when you are completely ready to throw yourself to the water and to do God's will, then the sea will be open for you, like for Nachshon ben Aminadav. Don't think that Nachshon ben Aminadav was a unique person, that only for him the sea been open. If it would be only for Nachshon ben Aminadav, we wouldn't hear about it. The things that took place with our ancestors is coming to teach us about ourselves, about us today. That Hashem can open the ocean for you today if you need it. That Hashem to protect His holy nation, His holy followers, His holy people, He will make for them wonders that will be greater than the wonders that we experienced in Egypt 3,000 years ago. And Hashem will supply and will build and will give and will provide whatever we're going to need for our complete redemption. And no one will be left behind. And I know you don't realize that. You don't believe me all the way. You want to believe, but you're not strong enough. You need to believe in miracles. You need to understand that those miracles are available for us. And it depends in how much you are ready to throw yourself and to lead your life above nature that Hashem will bring you to that level that you're also going to be above nature. You need to throw nature. 
you need to give up on all of your confidence, fake confidence, on all of your safeties, on all of your plans, on all of your tricks, on all of your combinations that you're making all of the time. You need to relax and when you're gonna back off from all of your imagination, from all of your selfish will and you will want only Hashem, then Hashem will show to you what that no one else can see, what that no one else can experience. He will bring His own light through your own channel, through your own soul. He will reveal for you secrets from Ginzaya de Malka, from the ancient treasures of the King. And on that it's written, Chadesh Yamenu Kikedem, that you're going to renew our days, that they will be like the ancient days, even before of creation, even before all physicality started that we will be connected to infinity even when we are here in our bodies because our bodies is only surrounding our spiritual soul and in the center of our soul, deep deep inside of ourselves we have an inner connection to infinity to the sea of souls, to the Creator Himself and from there you can bring down to this world every kind of bounty, every kind of grace and kindness and good and beauty and pleasure and satisfaction that exist over there. You can bring it down to this world. Like that Moshe had to go up to heaven and to fight with Hashem and he brought the Torah down to this world. A man, flesh and bone, that came out from a woman, that he had two parents, a father and a mother, a regular normal human being that realized that there is nothing more important than Hashem and he really took it seriously and he threw all the world behind his back and he didn't care about anything else. Rabbi Nachman is asking a question, how can it be that you can hold a small penny, a small coin in your hand and to put it close to your eye and you put it close enough, if you put it close enough you won't see the light of the sun. Rabbi Nachman is asking, how can it be that such a tiny coin can block such a huge light size like the sun? How can it be? Tiny. So Ben is answering a simple answer. It depends how close it is to your eye. If really you're focusing on it, you won't see no light because all your mind is into it, so you're not going to see the light. But if you realize, okay, it's a small coin, so the light is helping you to see its real size and its real value and shape and what it can be used for. And then you're going to use it properly, but only if you're going to hold it far enough that it won't block your, your ability to see. That's the secret. We should use everything that Hashem Barach is giving to us in life for the higher divine purpose of our life, to serve Hashem with it. You have health, you need to do something for Hashem with your health. You have money, you need to do something for Hashem with your money. You have qualities, talents, abilities, power, you need to use them all for the sake of heaven, for Hashem to be happy for Hashem to be satisfied. And the thing that is satisfying Hashem Barach more than anything else is the success of His children. Like that the main thing for a parent is to see his children happy and strong and he doesn't have anything else in his world that is as important as his children. Exactly like that and even higher and higher than that it's with Hashem. That for Father in Heaven, He doesn't have anything else that is higher and more important for Him than the sake of His children. So if you really want to do the Avodat Hashem and to become like that child that we said before, that he's ready to go and to do even worse works than the works of the slave, and he's ready to do everything, and by that he will become in that level as a partner, as an equal brother to the King Himself, for that you need to go and collect the holy souls that went off the way, went off the derech and to bring that herd back to Hashem, to be a shepherd, to be a leader, to be a person that provides and gives and support and love and cares about others 
And when Hashem see that you're qualified, that you're worthy, He will not going to spare a thing from you. He will give you everything that exists, everything that there is to give. You will have the clear and clean access. You're going to own the code, you're going to own the key, You gonna the doors will be open for you. Whenever you're going to need it, you're going to have it. Before you're going to call Him, He will answer your prayers. For me, it's reality. I'm inviting you to join me to that same place. Because for me it's reality. Because I can see the supervision of Hashem. Because I can see that when I'm thinking about something and that thing is important in my eyes to the will of Hashem, Hashem is helping me and supporting me and providing the things that I need. Yesterday after my wife and I had a conversation on that and I wanted to show her inside the Likutei Mu'aran what is written about the words Ginzaya de Malka. I opened the Likutei Mu'aran in the end of, of it where that it's written all the concepts that are written in Likutei Mu'aran and I fell in like I, 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 I opened the book with a, in a certain place and the finger was holding the word Geula, redemption. And, and it was the page of Ginzaya de Malka. So the Likutei Moran is such a, it's a thick book. And I just opened it somewhere in the end and it was the exact page that Ginzaya de Malka is written on, in that same page. But the finger was pointing the word Geula, redemption. So from that understand, the access that you will have to Ginzaya de Malka, to those ancient treasures of Hashem, to have access to all the knowledge that exists. It's only when your intention is to bring Geula. When you want to bring a salvation to everyone in the world, that the squirrels and the porcupines and the birds will have a shelter, will have their food supply, whatever they need. That Garze Evim Keves, that the wolves and the sheep will be able to live together with peace, in harmony, to love each other, to care about each other, that they won't hate and, and attack each other to cancel all cruelty from the world, all bad, all dark forces, to remove them. For that we need to be ready to fight, to fight against those ones that are holding our nation down, that are making us to feel like slaves, that are taking advantage of us, that are using and abusing us. If you want to save people, you need to be like Moshe. You need to be ready to go and to fight for your people. You need to be ready to sacrifice your life to save the weak and the soft ones and the fragile ones, to go and to protect them with your own body, with your own money, with your own power, with your own time, and to give it all back to Hashem. And when Hashem will see that we're worthy, He will give us that access to that knowledge that will provide the answer for all of our questions and all of our lackings will be filled. Amen. Can you add something? In this world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.